Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Ordinary Data Scientist where we talk about data science. So friends, uh, in the previous chapter we had a brief introduction to the statistics. We read about the difference between a population and sample, the the different kind of measures used in a population versus the sample. So I'll request that please go through the previous uh, video if you haven't watched it yet and the notes also that uh, that i have prepared from the book where i have uh, summarized the the understanding and learning from the chapter okay so today we will talk about the chapter 2 which is regarding the charts and graphs so it's very very important you know to understand the importance of charts and where exactly we should use to give you a understanding of the graph and charts let me show you a real example Uh, from the ministry of health where they published the covid vaccination you know uh, numbers so here you can see that some of the numbers are are real like here you see what is the registration what is the total dose uh, every day uh, what are the total dose today what is the total dose till date and all but here you can see some of the graphs for example this one here you will see that the graphs are showing a train so it is it shows shows a pattern that yeah the peak it goes to a peak then probably remains the pattern and then it comes down and then again it goes peak and all so probably this period when it's the lowest where the new stock comes up right because you get the states get the stock of covid vaccines probably you know they they supply those vaccines to uh, to villages and different districts and you know probably after 5 days they get a new stock uh, from the manufacturer and not so that's why there is a pattern you know for let's say this is the pie chart so how the uh, vaccination looks like for different kind of population size how the, the categories by male female and others and all so this is this is very good presentation of lot of kpis but we don't need to go through the numbers for example this table if i show you this table here this table has so many numbers that you might not able to understand what exactly is happening right uh, which state is doing good how many population is getting covered and all but if you look into this kind of charts like for example this one village coverage you will see yeah uh, uttar pradesh is at the top you know in terms of first dose but maharashtra is top in terms of second dose and all so you will see uh, through a bar chart we can clearly make some good observation so that's the important of having charts and graph people before jumping into the actual course let's again go through a quick example from the book so the book has an example of oil consumption versus the coal consumption so you have united states how many million tons they consume and this is yearly then uh, a, how many million uh, tons of oil they consume china and japan and all those countries right so here is the numbers which which of course you have you can go through the numbers read that yeah probably russia doing uh, consuming more than germany and all but let me show you the very nice graphs that we can populate using the same data so let's scroll down Uh, and i think it should be towards the end of the chapter let me quickly find it yeah here it is so this the same kind of information if you put on a charts like here is a pie chart where you can clearly see that united state consume almost 45% of the world's or top countries consumption you know that's that's the significance of of just one country oil consumption in terms of but if you see in terms of coal china consume almost 53% of the coal huge huge india if you see is constant 6% and 8% in both here you can see the pattern how you know it changes across countries like the developed countries they mostly consume the oil but the developing nations they mostly consume coal because it's cheaper it's uh, it's available in abundant you know and also you know the rich countries the developed countries they prefer you know uh, uh, resources which can produce lesser green green uh, greenhouse gas and lesser probably pollution so that's why they are moving towards oil and then probably towards uh, renewable resources 
So again, the oil consumption, how different countries look like. So United States, we see in terms of number, almost 900 something. Then the, then the second comes China, which is probably 380 or something. And then the, then the, these countries are at the same level. Yeah. So through charts, we, we kind of summarized the data, understood it very well, and also got the quick insights, right? So let's go through some of the details now and we'll talk about some of the charts uh, that we will use very often in our uh, data science and uh, what kind of data you would need to populate those charts, right? Cool. So before going to the details of the charts and all, let's understand two kinds of data, okay? That one is your ungrouped and then second is your grouped, okay? So what is the difference between ungrouped data and grouped data? So if I say, uh, you please bring the uh, score of each Indian player. Let's say if I if I tell you to bring score of each Indian, Indian player, you will say, okay, player one scored 50 runs, player two scored 40 runs, and player three scored, let's say 50 runs, player four scored, let's say another 100 runs. So these are the individual score right so this is ungrouped as of now ungrouped similarly let's say this is team a and let's say this is another team uh, team b where the player one scored let's say another 60 player two scored 40 player three scored another 50 and player four scored 90. now this is this is team a and team b but the data you see is at a player level so this is ungrouped data now group data will be when I say that, hey, tell me the total, total of team A and uh, total of team B. So you will say, yeah, total here is around 140 and here it's uh, 100 and 140, 240, something like that, right? 140? No, 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 it's 240. So it's 240 versus 2, okay, exactly, 240 versus 240. So that score has been grouped at a team level. So that's the difference between group by and let's say ungrouped data. So let's come back to this example. Here you see a data of unemployment at a yearly level. So year one, year two, year three, up to, up to year 60, 60 years of data. This is ungrouped data, right? It's a yearly level data. But if I want to make any sense out of it, I cannot look into probably 60 data points. It's too much information for me, right? So that's why we will group the data by something. Here we took example of by group by team. Similarly, here we will group the data by something to reduce the size of the data. To reduce the size. Means we have 60 data points, too much information. Can we reduce? Yeah. So there is a one way to reduce the data is by class interval. You know, so here what I did, let's say uh, 2.3 and probably maximum will be somewhere, let's say maximum I see here 12. So, you know, and some minimum will be somewhere as of now, let's, let's go ahead with 2.3. So I'll say that, okay, 2.3 to 12. So I'll try to make some classes, you know, some with the regular intervals and then count how many data points are falling in, the, in that class. So we'll let's start with one class, one to three. So this is the class I defined that one to three. So I'll literally count that how many data points are there between one to three. So let's say one, two, you know, literally two, three, four, and so on and so forth. If I count, I'll say, okay, there are just four. Similarly, three to five, five to seven, and so on and so forth up to, as I said, 12, there will be five data points. So I group the data by classes these classes and i count this is not actual value or sum unlike we did here the sum or average no this is a count so this is frequency okay now what what exactly we can see here is that the 60 years of in unemployment data if you see the maximum unemployment rate falling under this particular bucket seven to nine percent so seven to nine percent has the maximum uh, maximum occurrences here 
seven to nine, not sorry, seven to nine. So this won't be there, seven to nine. Yeah, so maximum occurrences, right? So please understand this concept. What is frequency? What uh, what are the classes? Uh, and then in the next uh, pages, we will discuss more about the class interval and frequency. Okay. Now using the class interval and frequency, the first graph that we will plot will be your frequency distribution. This is the first uh, you know graph that we will plot using that. Okay, frequency distribution. Okay. Now frequency distribution is nothing but you you read the definition here is that you kind of uh, summarizing the data by interval and count the number of occurrences. Okay, the same thing. So number of occurrences by class. Okay, this is this is something. Okay. Now to give you an example, I think this this is the example only that uh, here we did the we had the ungrouped data. This is the ungrouped data, and then we grouped using the class interval, and then we are counting the frequency and all. So this is nothing but the frequency distribution, right? Table two point two, table two point two. Now the next question you might ask that hey, how do we decide that how many class intervals should be there? What should be the range of each interval? Like one to three. How do we decide this kind of thing? Yeah. So that's that's what we will discuss in the next page. That how do we decide that? Okay. So the things that we need to decide in our class interval uh, or in our frequency distribution are the the uh, count of class and the second is class range right? like 1 to 3 3 to 5 so the range is 2 2 right so this is this is the range and the count here if you if I come back to here I say that the count is 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 so count is 6 right so that's the count is so I'll take the same example and then uh, we will we'll try to populate the similar kind of uh, similar kind of your uh, table. The first thing that you should uh, you should find in the ungrouped data, you will have the ungrouped data like x1, x2, up to 2, xn, something like that. In the, uh, in the ungrouped data, the first thing you will find is minimum. What is the minimum? say xp is the minimum and what is the maximum so somewhere might be xw is your maximum okay so here we found the minimum value and the maximum value then we will find the range the range is nothing but your xw minus xp means your max value minus mean value this is this is what we'll find uh, from your max and mean okay here if i take the real example i think the the mean if i remember correctly is 2.3 uh yeah two but let me quickly check uh, i think yeah it's 2.3 only yeah 2.3 and the maximum is if i remember correctly 12 let's quickly say yeah 12 so the range in this particular example will be 12 minus 2.3 right 2.3 so 12 minus 2.3 which will be around 9.7 yeah 9.7 this is the range the first thing we found is range okay now generally the class uh, the the count of class and all generally it happens uh, generally you take between anything between uh, count of class is generally between 5 to 20 anything you can take uh, we start with 5 and then if the the, the, the data size is huge we'll probably try to increase the uh, increase the count of class also so here, uh, you know, randomly I'll take probably five. I'll start with five and then six, you know, can go to seven also and so on and so forth. So there is no as such rule, but please drop uh, your thoughts in comment if you 
if you are aware of any rule but with my knowledge there is no as such uh, rule to decide the count of uh, count of classes okay so we we decide based on the distribution like okay if we if we make five classes how it look like and is six and so on and so forth okay so i'll i'll try to make the uh, uh, the examples exactly with uh, what what is there in the book so let's take six count of uh, count of classes equal to six okay now the second uh, sorry third thing that we will will find is that class range or width right what should be the clown uh, what should be the class width so that will be range divided by number of class so if i say uh, 9.7 divided by 6 which will be which will be approximately approximately you know 1.3 yeah around 1.3 or something so that is that is you can say 2 so that's the range you decide so that's why the classes you will prepare that let's say class 1 will be 1 to 3 class 2 will be 3 to 5 and here 3 is excluded here 3 is included similarly class 3 will be 5 to 7 5 is included 7 is not included you know 7 to 9 9 to 11 and the last one is 6 classes 11 to 13 so that's how you will prepare the classes and then literally you will count that how many data entries are there in each class like x1 x3 x5 so on and so forth and then you will prepare the table in the desired format like the format that we have here okay so that's how we will prepare the classes all those things are written here in the book already that how you can find the range which is the smallest minus uh, which is the difference between the largest and smallest number and then as i said the one thumb rule here here is the uh, thing that i was showing or i was telling that the thumb rule is that you will take any number between 5 to 15 and then you know using the frequency distribution you will decide what should be the best fit there okay so and then i said what should be the class length so the the length will be nothing but your range divided by number of uh, number of classes that you want to generate okay so that's how you will create the frequency distribution table okay i'm spending more amount of time here explaining the, the frequency table because that's the base of the the entire chapter and then once we understand how to create the chart table and all then we will move a little faster there okay cool uh, next you can read about class midpoint but this is the, as you as you might have already guessed that if it is if it is 1 to if it is 1 to 3 the midpoint will be 2 if it is 5 to 7 the midpoint will be 6 and so on and so forth so this that's how you can clearly you know calculate that also like 3 to 5 the midpoint is 3 plus 5 divided by 2 yeah okay now relative frequency relative frequency and cumulative frequency are the two things that uh, we need to understand what is relative frequency what is cumulative frequency okay now let's come to this example uh, we are using the same data so uh, 1 to 3 the the frequency uh, 11 to 13 what is the frequency you know uh, 5 and what is the total so total is your 60 data points we understand the class midpoint also class midpoint is nothing but this plus this divided by 2 you will get 2 4 6 8 10 12 okay now relative frequency relative frequency means how many data points are present in each class compared to total so if i want to calculate the relative frequency of this particular class the class 1 it will be it will be 4 divided by 60 right similarly here it will be 12 divided by 60 here 13 divided by 60 and so on so forth the last will be 5 divided by 60 right and if you sum it total it should be 1 isn't it because it's nothing but 4 divided by 60 12 divided by 60 if you sum everything it will be 60 by 60 which will be 1 so that's the class distribution 
Now within using the class distribution only, you can literally say that here I have around 6.6% values, here I have around 20% values, here I have around 22%, 31%, 12% and here I have 8%. So the maximum values that you see in the, in the data is 31% which is the 7 to 9. As I was saying, either you can clearly see here by number of entries that out of 60, 19 entries are falling under this particular uh, particular uh, class or you can see the literally you can see the distribution also that 31 31 percent coming under this particular uh, this particular class now cumulative frequency cumulative frequency is nothing but uh, you are adding the uh, the previous the exact previous data point so i'll just rough it very quickly just, just a second yeah so so the cumulative uh, cumulative will be your uh, sum of the previous like for example if you start here it will be 4 if you come here it will be 4 plus 12 similarly if you come down here it will be 4 plus 12 plus 13 you know 29 similarly here it will be 4 plus 13 plus uh, 12 plus 13 plus 19 48 so on so forth at the end it will be 60 4 16 29 48 55 and 60 yeah so uh, cumulative frequency we understood that and please try to uh, solve this problem it's very very easy to understand uh, this problem statement again is a kind of a uh, data of 40 week period and then you have to you have to uh, find the distribution table and all so please uh, you know try to solve this now then another question might be in your mind that hey this number of classes as this is a, a random number that we will generate will it be consistent across all uh, all problem all solutions you know so no it won't be so you might be taking seven as an as a class number of class but your colleague might be might be taking six or eight it, it can happen uh, so it don't worry about the class this number of class it's a, it's again a, a kind of a, a, it's it depends on the distribution how how the you know the the class distribution look like using different kind of numbers and whichever suits the best will will select that one only. okay now next topic is that quantitative data graphs okay quantitative means we want to understand the quantitative aspect of the of the data you know the the numeric aspect of the data okay okay the the first chart that we will talk about is histogram let's quickly understand the histogram here okay so histogram i'll take a very random example let's say class 1 to 3 3 to 5 5 to 7 7 to 9 9 to 11 there are just five classes and the frequency is 5 here 10 here again 10 15 and then let's say 20. now if if this is the table frequency table and i want to plot a 2d graph y and x axis how should i plot so the y axis the y axis will be your frequency and the x axis will be your classes not the ex exact number just make sure we are not plotting the exact number we are plotting the frequency so we are not so i'll write it not not populating the actual values okay we are not populating the actual values okay so now let's see the uh, the the example from here one to three there will be just five entries so one to three five seven nine eleven now three to five there will be just ten entries double five to seven same ten entries 7 to 9 15 entries so it will go top and then 9 to 11 a little bit top you know? so that's how the histogram will look like right so you have uh, this is your 1 to 3 then 3 to 5 5 to 7 and all so this is this is how you plot it in a histogram kind of thing histogram chart okay 
so uh, again to pop to prepare a histogram you need to prepare the table first you have to prepare the table first and then you have to plot them on a x y axis so all those things we did uh, to calculate the tables and then you have to do it for histogram and then just plot them on a x axis y axis so this is histogram okay so here here is the example from that data similarly uh, there are two example also like poly uh, i think frequency polygon and ojive i think ojive yeah ojive these are the two example just quickly let's understand uh, so in the histogram you just plotted them on the uh, on the x-axis by their range like 1 to 3 and all okay so the second thing second graph that we have here like the frequency uh, the frequency polygon let's plot that also okay so frequency uh, in frequency polygon you will just plot the class inter class midpoint so here the class midpoint was here somewhere yeah similarly Three to five the class midpoint was here around uh, four here it was around six here 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 so we'll you will plot the the same graph the same graph but just mix or just connect the class midpoints see this is two four six eight and ten that's that's what you just plotted you just connected the class midpoint okay and similarly the ogi the the third curve uh, that we just saw o it it says ogi but i think spell is o g i g i v s yeah ogi here you will uh, popul here you will populate the cumulative graph okay cumulative graph so cumulative means here i just had let's say here i had something let's say 5 so the next data point will be at 15 instead of 10 it will be at 15 so if i populate that scene let's say this is your 5 the next will be 15 similarly the next will be 5 10 10 25 25 and so on and so forth so the graph will go straight upward because you are adding with the previous number so it should always be more than the previous data point but in the frequency polygon it might be equal it might be lesser also it might be upper also but in ozai or the cumulative it should always be upward right so that's that's the ozai dot plots uh steam f leaf they, these are two two more charts that we'll quickly talk about before we jump into the uh quality qualitative data okay so let's quickly cover the two more charts those are like uh, your uh, dot uh, this, this i'm talking about this one dot plots okay so dot plots is nothing but you have you already have the data points you just want to uh, populate the data points on a uh, on axis but the data points this time you will plot in the actual values that's the difference you know so earlier we were plotting the frequency like the occurrences here we will plot the actual values will be plotted okay instead of the frequency here we will plot the actual value so example here the same uh, uh, annual unemployment rate from Canada so you see this is 2. Point, I think 2.3 was the lowest and then 2.8 then 2.9 probably something 3.1 3.2 something something and then if there are multiple entries of the same data let's say it, if it is 4.4 you will you know uh, uh, stock dots on on top of each one so that will that will give a sense that the most occurrences is happening here if you see which is which might be around 7.2 7.2 has the maximum data points like 5 6 yeah so that's a dot plot and uh, let's quickly understand the steam and leaf also steam and leaf again we will plot the steam even in steam and uh, steam and uh, uh, leaf will plot the 
actual values only but instead of dot it will be like something like this let's say if you have data point is 3.2 3.3 3.4 3.5 4.1 4.2 4.4 5.1 5.2 5.5 .5, something like that so these are these are your random data points so the steam and you know uh, leaf will look like that let's say this is your three so you will say okay 3.2 point three uh, point four and so on and so forth yeah and similarly if it is if it is like four it will be point one point two point four and if it is five point one point two point five point six if there are many you can plot them also so you see that uh, the data points in the range of three point something has three data points but in the five point something there are the maximum data points again I never, to be very honest, I never use these plots in my life, uh, steam and leaf. But you know, if you if you have a huge data and want to understand, you can use this kind of uh, plots. Okay. So very quickly, I just skip over the uh, definition. There are some uh, there are some problem statement which you can probably solve. People, I think it's more than 30 minutes. So let's take a pause here. Please revise all the concepts discussed in the video like histogram, frequency table and all. And then we will continue this, this chapter in the second video also. See you in the another video. Thank you.